Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Kane Audio vlog. It is Friday, so it's time for another Ask Me Anything. As usual, same rules apply. If you've got a question for me, then please comment this video now and I'll get to it next week and answer your questions. Before I start, I'll go through any house admin. Um, next Friday, I should be good to get this video done. But I'm off to Nosdoc Festival playing there with the Wartone Records gang. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. Should be a great night. Um, what else? I should be good for the video though, so that's fine. Uh, the heat wave is over, so I've now set up a light in the corner, so I don't have amazing daylight anymore. Um, uh, that was probably too good to last. Uh, that, I think, is about it. So, on with your questions. St. Nicholas, Dell, high five. St. Nicholas again. Uh, anyone got the link to the side chain? Oh. The sidechain video I mentioned in last week's video, I've responded and I've posted a link and also I worked out how to do the YouTube recommending a video, whatever. So if you're watching this week's, you've probably seen last week's and now that's irrelevant. Never mind. Uh, Casey Music. Hey Dom. Wow, these tips about drum mixing were so helpful. Thanks a lot. Uh, especially the ADSR tip helped a lot. Uh, finally had the financial opportunity to get your How to Make Structures tutorial on Sonic Academy uh, where you also break down those loop ending, out of the box, tom percussions etc. My question also refers to that tutorial. Uh, did not think about your point with labels. Right, hang on. Did, was that a question? Uh, how, uh, okay, no, that's not a question. That's fine. That's good. Okay. Um, yeah, I can't even remember what I did in that tutorial if I'm totally honest but I, I I do I think I remember talking about the tom drums that I used uh, to fill in spaces almost like a, 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 a drum fill I guess uh, did not think about your point with labels etc this is talking about uh, running through a mix down in these videos uh, that's a good point of course and makes this pretty hard I mean of course someone can say okay and then I'll not publish on this label but when a label actually knocks on your door who could resist yeah it, exactly the point really so I mean you know there's there's going to be a lot of unsigned music that gets a mix down um, and obviously if I ran through that and did a whole online series you know going through that track and then that track gets signed to a label um, and even if it was signed to a label in the first place, there's always chances it could be licensed to another label and, it, it, you know, it can get confusing. But like I say, I, I need to chat to uh, one of my somewhat regular clients, actually, uh, because I, I, I did a mix down for him uh, probably a couple of months ago now. And uh, I felt like that was a really cool track to do. So I, 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 I'm pretty sure it got signed. Um, to a particular label that I know, so I'll hopefully be able to organize something with that. Um, now my question, in your masterclass, you did hardly any sound treatment with EQ, etc. Uh, did you take the already processed sounds or are they really as pure as they seem in the videos? Um, uh, that's a good question. So a lot of people always ask me questions on mixdown and um, I know uh, a lot of people who like my music tend to appreciate how how clean some of the sounds come across. Um, and I think that's that's a really good question, actually, because a lot of people ask, how do I get it so clean? And uh, I think you're probably right in that Sonic Academy tutorial. I don't really do much processing. Um, on that track structures i don't i don't think i did much processing i mean i think some of the percussion sounds i may have edited beforehand what i quite often do is i'll i'll find uh, a percussion sound that's 90 percent what i want and then i might process it through nerve or something and and maybe clean out some of the low end or the high end or put it through a transient designer and then sometimes what I'll do is I'll export that as a single shot 
to then re-import and, and so I can start chopping and changing and rearranging. Um, with structures, I don't think I did much of that. So, and this is why this question is important because I think a lot of people expect a mix down to to do some magic to their track and actually your track needs to be 95 percent sounding great and clean and everything before the mix down um and part of that is is choosing the right sounds in the first place you know if for example let's stick with the tom drum thing if you're using um a big heavy extended saturated tom drum that's just got this big booming resonance point you know that's going to be hard to incorporate into a track to make it sound clean so much like with last week's episode i mentioned using adsr and just bring down the sustain and then the decay of that tom drum um, you know, and maybe stick it through a high pass filter or something just to kill some of the really low end, the unnecessary low end. Um, so I think what I'm trying to say is, is sometimes it's really important to pick the right sound before you even process it. If you know you want a, a short, sharp sound that acts as some sort of flicking drum fill at the end of say a four or eight bar loop or something, then I think you need to be careful in which sounds you choose. And that's probably one of the most important parts of music production is choosing the right sounds at the very beginning. Um, and I think that, that makes a world of difference later on then, because if you choose some great clean sounds on day one and then by day five of your production you, you know you've you've got a hundred new sounds in there you know it's going to be really hard to find which ones are causing issues and which ones aren't um, unless you get it right in the first place from the very beginning and did you just by saying something about a new track on mousetrap spoiler the waf 8 release <laughs> uh, no i don't think so i mean we are friends is on volume 7 now so volume 8 will be coming at some point um i don't think i gave away any release dates because i don't even have any release dates uh i knew what the release date was going to be and i think that's what i mentioned uh, in last week's video but that release date has been delayed into some time in the future so I don't I don't think I'm wrecking anything for mousetrap there and if mousetrap guys are watching I'm sorry <laughs> um, but no I don't I don't know when it's coming out so and I don't know who else is on it other than a few people so uh, I've not got much to give away uh, I completely agree with you about R&B, by the way. Um, as always, thanks for answering the questions. While well, listening to you is pretty much fun, though, especially on my Dell computer. High five. Cool. Uh, oh, what have I done? Oh, I've just gone back a video for some reason. Sorry. Hang on. There we go. Uh, da, 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 da. Right, Rod Marconi, some useful tips. Thanks, Dom. Dell, high five. Med, hey, Dom. Uh, one, in your opinion, what is the best analog synthesizer VST? Uh, Diva, the Legend, Mini 3, Monarch. Uh, I really like Diva. Uh, that's the UE stuff. Um, I do really like their stuff. Um, now, was it Diva? They've done another one as well, uh, which is like a modular system. Uh, I only got the demo of that and I loved it and then I never got round to trying it anymore. And I will get that, I think. Uh, Monarch I use. Mini V3, not so much. Um, who is the closest to the real things? I, well, I mean, I think the Mini V3 is the only one that's modelled on a synth, um, being the Moog. Um, Monarch, I don't think is modelled on anything. Diva, I, I'm not aware of. Uh, but you know what? I, 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 I don't like to say which one's closest to the original because sometimes it doesn't matter. Um, you know, if, if you've got 
if you're talking about high-end plugins, something like um, Brainworks have got a new one coming out. Uh, is it SSL? I think they've gone with an SSL have given their stamp of approval. You know, that's about and all the UAD plugins. They're about modelling genuine analog hardware, and um, those things are, are pretty special if that's what you're after. But I think when it comes to synths, if I'm honest. The digital things never truly sound like the analog counterparts because it's just different. Analog and digital synthesizers, you know, digital will always be more accurate, um, which is usually a good thing, sometimes not the best thing. So I don't like to compare too much. Uh, to how do you see the difference between Ableton and Bitwig? Um, there are lots of big differences. I think, in my personal opinion, uh, Bitwig is at an advantage because it was built from the ground up at a later date. And I think that gives anyone a, a, an advantage. If, if, if you were to build a workstation from scratch now, we know what we want as producers, whereas back in day one of Ableton, uh, I don't think anybody really knew where the future of software was going. So I, I think, you know, Bitwig takes it for me. I'm a Bitwig user and, and I, you know, I, I do love Bitwig. Um, so I don't think I could ever say anything bad about them. Um, and is switching doors a good idea? Only if you want to. Um, and I think even the guys at Bitwig will agree, it, you know, <clears throat> if you're an Ableton user and you love Ableton, don't switch to Bitwig. If you have problems with Ableton and whatever that problem is, is solved by something in Bitwig, then move to Bitwig. But, I, you know, I think there are, you know, you need to realise there are world class producers out there for every workstation, you know, whether that be... Claude Von Stroke uh, used um, Propellerhead's uh, Reason. Um, Draft on Mousetrap uses Fruity Loops. Uh, I use Bitwig. Um, you know, Deb Mouse was using Ableton and is using Bitwig, and I think he uses both now. Um, you know, there are, the, and there are countless producers who use Logic or anything like that. So, you know, um, is it Lang, I think, who uses Pro Tools? I could be wrong on that. Um, so look, it, you know, it all comes down to what workflow you prefer. For me, uh, Bitwig having all the built-in modular parameter control um, is just something that every workstation should have had. Um, so that really, for me, is just the ultimate um, you know, and the team at Bitwig, I think, are really forward thinking. You know, it, the the guys behind Bitwig are also behind a lot of other projects in the world of the music industry. So, for example, standardizing and rewriting class descriptions for MIDI, for example. You know, it's um, there's a lot of stuff going on in the background that I think, you know, I have a lot of respect for that. Uh, three, is there any way to send you a project for feedback? Uh, theoretically, yes. Realistically, I'm not sure. I guess, I mean, if, if for example, you know, I do one-to-one -one sessions with people, so I guess maybe if that was booked in as an official session where I sat down for a couple of hours, went through the project and came up with notes and things, um, I think that's probably possible. Um, if that's something you want to do, uh, get in touch with me through the Kane Audio website, which is kaneaudio.com, and we'll have a chat about it there because I guess it depends on the track. I mean, I wouldn't want to be charging anyone for half a day or a day's work or whatever if it didn't need that. So if you, for example, just sent me the MP3 first while we talked about it, and then I can just get a rough idea of what you've done so far, and then maybe I might be able to go, do you know what, this just needs a good bit of feedback or something in, instead of a full session. 
um, which I'm always happy to do with any clients, really. Uh, great AMA, thanks for answering all the questions from the beginning of this series. You're welcome. Uh, Zombo, have you tried Ableton 10? Also Dell, high five. Ableton 10, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't even tried it. I probably will. Um, I have nothing against Ableton. I, I, I still think Ableton is a great workstation. I just don't use it anymore um, because Bitwig does everything I want it to do and I guess we're all kind of suckers for a habit, aren't we? So um, yeah, I, I got to a point with Bitwig when it first came out where I started realizing some of the features were exactly what I'd needed for years. So um, yes, I, I haven't really opened Ableton for a long time. Um, but I've heard great things about it, so everyone I know that, that still uses Ableton are raving about 10, so I hear good things. Uh, Kavake, this episode's question, are you the secret DJ? I don't know what that means. Uh, is there some rumour going around about a secret DJ? Uh, so it's not me anyway. <laughs> Uh, also, been catching up with Meet Katie's Lowering the Tone podcast. Uh, who should pop up as an interviewee? That'd be me. Yeah, uh, guys, if you want a great podcast, I highly recommend uh, Lowering the Tone by Meet Katie. Uh, he's uh, a, a brilliant producer. Um, and it's, uh, I guess, kind of like these AMA series where it's just me chatting to the camera. His... Uh, podcasts uh, so he does a mix and whatever at the beginning and then he does a you know a one or two hour interview at the end of it and it's a really laid back podcast um, and yet yeah, so I was one of the uh, interviewees on one of his episodes um, drove over to his place for it and uh, lovely guy yeah uh, so I highly recommend that podcast a uh, big fan of Mark from back in the day, and it was fun to hear another familiar voice. Weird coincidence that I listened to that interview the day before you talked about the album on this AMA. Hmm. Um, yeah, again, I, I can't recommend that podcast enough. Uh, last week, uh, there was a new episode out with Brent from... Was it Brent? Yeah, it was Brent from Aqua Sky, um, who again is sort of... Uh, Oh, I guess today you'd call it old school breaks. Uh, that's weird. Uh, I, for one, I'm looking forward to your new album, uh, especially with variations in genre, BPM, whatever. No pressure, get on it. Yeah, um, that's what I keep telling myself. Uh, the story element is a good point. Most of my favourite albums have that quality. Uh, recent examples being John Hopkins' Singularity and Nils Fram All Melody. Oh yeah, Del, high five. Uh, hey, Del boy, high five. Thanks, Dom, as always, your answers and uh, doing this AMA vlog. Did I say this is Sunset 86? Uh, adding on to my question last week about submitting stems, I now I kind of now understand what you mean about getting the sounds and track as close as you want them before finally sending read more them for mix down. Would the client be responsible for using high pass filters, etc., to clean up the sounds before submitting, or is this completely the job of the mix engineer? Uh, I'll answer that bit first both so it's not always the producer's job but the way I see it is it's the producer's job to make all the creative subjective demands of a project so if for example you think as a producer your kick drums are have too much low end then I think that's probably your responsibility to just cut out a little bit of the low end. However, if you're working in a bedroom on not so good monitors, then I think you're better off sending it as it is to the mix engineer and explaining, I think the kick drums have too much low end, let me know what you think. Because I think the mix engineer will pick up or should pick up if the kick drums have too much low end but it could be a subjective choice of the producer to scoop out some low end so it's not 
It's not 100% down to the producer. The mix engineer sh will recognise if something isn't clean enough or whatever. So leave that to the mix engineer for the finishing touches because it's their job. I guess it's your job as a producer to make all the sounds and to fit them together so that they make a good track. Then it's the mix engineer's job to make each sound fit with every other sound. And that can be by removing frequencies, adding frequencies, adding distortion, um, compression, um, you know, dealing with any clicks, pops, tails. Um, it's about cleaning it up and polishing it. And that's really what a mix engineer should do. So that, and, and also make the track sound good as a whole so that it sounds near enough the same on any sound system, whether it be a club sound system or your mum's kitchen hi-fi. Um, where was I? Also, could you explain a bit more with regards to format, i.e. 24-bit, 48k, I tend to use 16-bit and less samples, but I have the option to export all stems in 24-bit, is that an absolute requirement? It's not an absolute requirement, but it is definitely preferred. Um, I ask for 24-bit, 48k for stems, um, because the bit depth is how many measurements in amplitude a WAV file contains. So the, the higher the bit depth, the smoother every wave is going to be when it's printed. Um, and then the sample rate is how often it records that. So 44.1 uh, is based on Nyquist theorem to do with the human hearing. Uh, so we measure a sample rate at twice the capacity of the human hearing so that we can't hear notches between volumes in a waveform. Um, but the more you put in there, the, the, the more room you have to play, um, especially when it comes to exporting, importing, exporting, importing. The lower the bit depth, the more uh, destruction that's going to cause. Um, but having said that, bearing in mind 99% of people listen to music on MP3s and they're over compressed and blah, blah, blah. I want to say it's not too important. I think if you exported a project at, say, 16-bit 44k, um, I'm not going to throw a tantrum, um, but I would probably say, do you have a 24-bit 48k version that I can have? If you've lost the project and there's no way of you rebouncing it or whatever, it's not the end of the world. We can, we can work with 16-bit 44.1k. Um, I just prefer 24-bit because you have much higher dynamics, you've got more headroom, uh, there's there's just more room to play as a mix engineer to be able to get it right. Um, so yeah, hopefully that answers that. Uh, thanks for all the answers, really love watching these videos. Cheers. Deadly Custer, good stuff Dom, it's Adele from me, high five. Uh, how's the sound turned out in your makeshift studio? Have you tested it with room EQ or similar yet? Uh, the sound in here is not bad, but it's taking some getting used to. Uh, the room is a lot smaller. Clearly, it's the back room of a house, so it's a temporary measure. Um, so it's, what, a, a sixth of the size of the, the studio I had in the unit I was renting. Um, so it's not ideal. I'd say it's far from ideal for me because I was so lucky that, that I built the last place by hand uh, so I knew every intimate detail of the materials and densities of the walls. Um, so I managed to get that place perfect. So it's it's a bit of a shock coming here. Um, I don't think it's a bad and it's definitely not terrible. Um, it's just not ideal. But no, I haven't done any room EQ stuff yet um, because I've purposefully delayed any mix down jobs and things like that because I wanted to give myself, you know, the best part of a month in this room to start getting used to the sound. Um, so I'm working on some of the sound design projects that I've been doing over the last few weeks are ones that don't require me to hear every little tiny detail like a mix down would. Um, so I'm sort of easing myself into it gently. Um, I've still got crapper off camera there that I haven't unpacked and 
Um, I haven't put up the acoustic tiles. I've put a few up that you can see, um, but there's some sort of stacked on a cupboard as well. Um, so uh, yeah, I haven't got that far yet, but I will. Um, and I have no idea what it's going to look like on Remi Q. Uh, Janice Lukmelis, Dell, high five. Uh, Key Sen, hi Dom, thanks for doing this AMA. My question is, uh, what are your thoughts on pink noise mixing? Is it a good reference? Pink noise mixing, so for anyone that doesn't know, uh, pink noise mixing is about finding the levels of instruments in a mix down. So for example, uh, if I remember rightly, um, and before I answer the question, I haven't tried pink noise mixing. It's not something I've ever felt the need to do. I think it's interesting. I think it's maybe something I'll try at some point, but I kind of come from a bit more of an old school background and that didn't exist then. So I've, I've never really felt the need to try it. But essentially what it is, is you, I guess you level match to pink noise. So you'd grab some pink noise through the master channel, fade up your kicks until you can just hear the kicks through the pink noise and then do the same with each instrument working your way up so that you can just about hear the track adding the stages to match the pink noise level and then supposedly um, I guess that somehow means that all your levels come out around the right place and then you remove the pink noise and you're left with a, I assume a good mix down. Um, I'm not sure if that really works and I'm not sure I'm not sure if that offers an advantage to anything else. I've never really looked into it in any great detail, but uh, I think it's interesting. I think it's an interesting idea and I can kind of understand or kind of think that might work. Um, so there we go. Is it a good reference? I don't know. Uh, what are your thoughts? I've just said and maybe I should try it out. Yeah, maybe I'll do a video on it actually at some point and I'll do it for real. Um, I think probably once I've got my proper studio built, that's probably the time to do it. Uh, and then final question, I can see I've got like two and a half minutes before my camera shuts off. St. Nicholas, uh, Pioneer EFX 500 ring mod, I think is previous question. Uh, I do have one, but getting it to hit on notes as it sort of jumps to the melody at set values. Um, what's that in reply to? I don't know. Was that one of last week's questions? Could be. I'm confused. Um, if that hasn't been answered, then ask me again in this video, uh, referencing what you're answering. Because I remember someone, I saw a comment from someone, and I don't know if it was this week or last week, someone mentioned ring mod on something. Um, yeah, and I, I remember liking the question and thinking that was a good question. Um, so I don't know if someone's deleted the question or whether it was last week or something. I can't remember. Whatever. Um, and that, double check. Yeah, that's it for this week. So thanks again for listening. And I will do my very best to get another one for next Friday. I'm pretty sure I, I should be fine for next Friday um, because of the festival. I'll probably record it on Thursday if I can. And that is everything. Thanks again for making it this far. Uh, as usual, if you have made it this far, then you guys deserve a medal. And I'll give you a keyword to comment to prove that you have seen it all the way through. Uh, I am looking at the word opal. See you next week. Cheers.